Hey guys, this is Justin, the founder and lead designer here at Grin Technologies. And it's been quite a while since I've done a product release video, and this particular one has been a long time in the making and one that I'm extremely excited to finally be delivering. What I have in my hands here is, not surprisingly, the rear version of our all-axle hub motor. So when we first released our all-axle front hub motor several years ago, it broke a lot of new ground in the space of direct drive hub motors. It was the first motor that was compatible with through-axle forks that was rapidly becoming the new standard, not just for high-end, but even medium-range bicycles, as a through-axle provides much greater stiffness and security for the front motor installation. It was also one of the few hub motors on the market to include an integrated torque arm. Rather than transferring all the torque through flats on an axle and putting stress on the bicycle's dropout and frame, the torque arm was built into the hub itself and could safely transmit that torque further up the fork frame, eliminating any extra stresses on the bicycle. And finally, for a direct drive motor, it was light. At just four kilograms, it was over 30% less weight than your typical generic direct drive motors in the same power class, and it put it only slightly heavier than the larger geared motors, which typically weigh about 3.8 kilograms. Those features all made it a standout hub motor, but the most common request we kept getting, not unsurprising, was when are you gonna make a rear version? And the answer is now. The rear version shares those three great traits of our front motor. With this simple swap of a few different insert pieces, it can be compatible with 135 millimeter quick release dropouts, or the 142 by 12 original through axle rear standard, or with a slightly wider insert spacer, it fits the 148 by 12 boost through axle standard that's increasingly common for uh, through axle mountain bikes. It also has an integrated torque arm on the non-drive side of the wheel. Now we machine this torque arm to be as low profile as possible, just hugging the axle to have the least amount of interference risk with the disc caliper hardware that exists on a lot of bicycle frames, especially post-mounted disc brakes that tend to have uh, collision considerations when you have too large of a torque arm on that side plate. This torque arm design conveniently attaches to the chainstay with a universal swivel mount that can accommodate almost any orientation, alignment, angle, and diameter of chainstay tubing. And then finally, the weight. Sharing all the same hardware as a front motor, it is drastically lighter than any other rear motor of this series. It is a couple hundred grams lighter than the front hub because of the extra weight of the longer axle on the hardware associated with the rear motor. So let's talk about that rear motor hardware now. So this has a Shimano HG industry standard cassette free hub body on it. Uh, that's compatible with all the eight to 11 speed drivetrains that are out there in most mountain bikes. So one of the questions surely on the tips of everyone's tongue is whether or not this free hub body can sense torque and have a built-in torque sensor. Now, given that Grin has released a motor last year with a built-in torque sensing cassette, you would think that our all-axle motor would also feature that, and trust me, we tried. In fact, that's part of the reason why the launch of this rear motor has taken so long. Um, but unfortunately, all of the torque sensing cassette free hubs that we were able to source and prototype with were not intrinsically compatible with the larger diameter necessity of a through-axle hub. They could only work for non-through-axle systems. So in the absence of having a torque sensing option, we did do the next best thing. And we actually managed to incorporate a high-resolution magnet disc on this free hub body so that we could add our own pass sensor built right into the motor. That eliminates the need for having to install a pass sensor on the cranks of your bike. And because the rotation of the free hub body is scaled by the gear ratio from your front to your back chain ring, it also amplifies the resolution of the pass sensor. So even though it's a 12 position sensor in the free hub, it behaves on the bike like a 30 to 50 pole sensor. That results in almost immediate takeoff the moment you start pedaling, the system's able to sense the pedal rotation. And as a two wire quadrature pass sensor, it gives the ability to have back pedal proportional region using our new Cycle Analyst 3.2 firmware. So the pass sensor built into this hub comes out conveniently as a separate cable using the same six pin high plug standard that we have on our controllers and that exists for the E-Rider, Sempu and other bottom bracket torque sensors. With each motor, we include a 120 centimeter extension cable that plugs from this motor's pass cable right up to the cycle analyst so that you can get the pass control features without any other hardware to mount on the bike. And in some situations, you may be able to plug this in directly to your motor controller if your motor controller has two wire pass sensing capabilities as well. So just as with our front motor, this hub is available in three different winding speeds. There's a slow seven and a half RPM per volt option, 
a standard 10 RPM per volt winding and a fast 12 RPM per volt choice. These three different winding speeds give a ton of versatility in choosing the right hub motor to reach the target speed you need based on different battery voltages and wheel diameter combinations. For people running at the higher power end of that spectrum or using this as a cargo driving hub motor, we've also got the stator aid injection port as the hub motor is fully sealed for stator aid compatibility and that drastically increases the thermal dissipation of the motor, allowing it to run at higher torque and higher power levels before overheating. So that summarizes all the great features that I had to talk about this motor. I think a lot of these things speak for themselves. We are expecting to see a huge demand and interest for people building cutting edge conversion kits and uh, we're doing our best to keep our production in stock. We're stepping up our manufacturing capacity. Our CNC lathe is running full tilt, and we really look forward to getting this motor in the hands of enthusiastic e-bike builders all over the world.